Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I've got a bit of a festive one for you featuring the Creality Ender 5 S1. Creality were kind enough to send me one of these brand new machines. It's already made a great addition to my workshop, and after using it for just a few months, I have to say I am very impressed. I did not purchase the printer, so this is a sponsored video, but as always, I'm very transparent with you guys. And I will in a few months create a follow-up video where I'll do an in-depth review of the full machine. In return they've asked me to feature the printer in a festive project video, so that's what I'm going to do here for you today. The idea behind this is that we can get more people involved with printing and getting started with their own projects. And I thought I'd keep it simple for this one, so it should, as I said, open up to a lot more people. And be a great project for those just looking to start out or they're just learning how to use their 3D printer. So what I'll do is I'll show you where we're going to get a model, how to download it, how we can import it into the slicer, slice the settings for the printer and export to 3D print. Exciting stuff, so let's jump into it and I'll show you what we're going to do. So what we'll be doing is 3D printing this Christmas village ornament in PLA. The cool thing about this print is that it has a hollow section underneath that lets you insert your own LEDs up inside. This means you can light it up with a simple battery pack and it's your own custom 3D printed ornament that you can use around the house, whether that be at Christmas time or throughout the year. Either way, it looks great. Okay, so first of all, let's go and locate a model that we can download ready to put into our slicer. We're going to be printing this Christmas village here by somebody called Five Nights. So I did not design this model. So all credit goes to the creator here. This is what it looks like in, in a rendered environment and this is what it looks like as a model. So if we click this button up here we can view it in real time in 3D. So we can drag and we can zoom and you can see it's basically a little hilltop with some festive elements to it. We've got a, a railroad down here with a train going across it. A couple of nice little houses, some trees and a nice house here right at the top. Pretty cool and if you look at the underneath it's hollowed out and it has some holes at the top there so that you can put some of your own LED lights up inside and that's what we're going to do. So this project is going to be pretty cool, we've got a bit of printing, a little bit of electronics and it's just the type of project to get you started with your tinkering and 3D printing. So to download this and view it on your local machine is super simple so what we're going to do, there's a button here that says download all files, if you click on that and once that counts down you should see a pop up here in the top right it'll download that for you. Then you want to navigate to your downloads file on your machine, wherever that is, whether you're on Mac or Windows. We want to right click, we're going to extract all, hit extract, that'll extract that zip file for us. We can go straight in there, I'll click on files, you'll see a file in there called Christmas Village. We're going to click on it, then right click on it, come down to open with, I'm going to open with 3D Viewer. That allows us to view 3D models in Windows. You can see if we zoom in now and move around, we can see that exact model that we had earlier on, except we can see it in a bit more detail and it's a bit smoother. So now that we've got that on our local machine, I'll talk to you a bit about the Creality Slicer, where you can get it and how you can install it and get it set up. So let's jump into it. Okay, next up we're going to download the Creality Slicer, which is extremely important for you to slice and 3D print your models. So what we're going to do is go to this website. All links I'll put down in the description below, so it'll make it easier for you. But if you go to this page, you'll see here there's a button, a download button for a Creality Slicer build, in this case 4.8.2. By the time you watch this, it might be a later version but it's all the same, so if you just click on the download button, that'll start downloading for you. It may take a little while depending on your internet speed, but I'll skip ahead of the video for you to continue. Once it's downloaded, just like before, we're going to come to our downloads folder. We'll see Creality Slicer in there. Right click, extract all, extract. That'll extract all those files for you, and you should be left with another folder on the desktop. There it is. If we go into there, you'll see there's an application. If you double click on this, it should ask you to install the Creality Slicer. Just follow all the steps like you normally would on any other application. With the Creality Slicer opened, you should see something like this. And just a little quick sort of guide on how to navigate this. If you hold the right click button, you can rotate. You can also zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. Pretty simple stuff. If you hold down the scroll wheel, you can pan around the screen. If you've used a slicer before, you'll be able to pick this up pretty easily. 
But for now, we're going to take our time with this. What we're going to do is first import that model that we just downloaded. And to do this, the most simple way, if you navigate to your file explorer, so I've gone back to that downloads file that we were just in. I'm going to go into the Christmas village, go into files, and you can see here we've got that Christmas village file. Now, if you click on this and just drag it into the Creality Slicer, place it on the workspace, you'll see that that starts to import. We can minimize this out the way and here we have the model that we just downloaded right in our slicer ready to be sliced for 3D printing. Again if we hold the right mouse button we can rotate around, we can look underneath, we can zoom in, we can zoom out and pan around. Basic controls but that's all you really need. Now what we'll do is we'll set up our slice setting. So up on the top here you'll see this user bar. If we click over here where for me it says standard quality, it might say something else for you. If you click on it you'll get this pop down and this has a ton of different settings in it but to be honest when you start out you don't really need to play around with too much the main ones you want to play around with here are quality this sets the layer height again this determines the detail of the print the lower this number the more detail your print will have but obviously it'll take longer to print because there are more layers the higher this number the less detail your print will have but it'll print quicker so it's always a trade-off between those another one you might want to look at is infill Infill determines how hollow the inside of the print is and I'll show you that it'll become more clear when we slice the model. Material, this is all to do with what material you're using and all we're simply doing is set any temperature. In this case I'm using the most common material which is PLA. So in this case I've got my print temperature at 210 and my build plate temperature at 50. Another more advanced one you can play around with is speed here. So if I click on this, what I've done here for this particular printer is the Ender 5 S1 boasts very fast print speed and it's one of its sort of biggest selling points so in this video I'm kind of putting that to the test a bit as well. So I've set the print speed here to be 250 millimeters per second which is exceptionally fast for FDM 3D printing. I've set the outer wall speed to be 40 just because your outer wall is where you're going to have or want the most detail. So ideally you want to slow that one down if you can uh, but for now I've set that at 250 you probably don't want to do that for your first print if you reset it standard print speed is going to be sort of 80 and then your outer wall speed is usually half of that so i'd leave that one as it is if you're a complete beginner as i said the main ones you're going to want are quality infill material and sometimes support if you're going to print something with supports this model doesn't need supports and how do i know that so if we come back to thingiverse oftentimes on here if you scroll down people always put print settings and print instructions so if I zoom in a bit you can see here we don't need rafts we don't need supports the resolution the optimal resolution to print is 0.2 and an infill of 7% and that's what we're going to do we simply follow the instructions and we apply them to the slicer and slice our model sometimes you can play around and you might find more optimal settings on your own again every 3d printer is different there are different slices out there so generally you have to find the best settings for you but this is a good ballpark figure to start from so I'd recommend doing that. So if we go back to Creality Slicer as I said I've pretty much set this up already so under quality 0.2 millimeters and again if you hover over each of these input fields it'll explain to you what they are and what they mean which is great from, from an educational perspective Material, I'm using PLA, so 210 degrees. Build plate temperature, 50 degrees. Infill here, I've set it to infill density of 7%. Uh, let's show you what that means. So I'm done with my settings here, so I can minimize these. And at the bottom, you'll see a button. My face is covering it here on the camera, but there's a button called Slice. If you click on that, that'll start to slice your model. And you'll see a progress bar on the bottom right. Once the model is sliced, you'll be able to see it in all of its layers inside this piece of software. So let me move myself out of the way here, just a little bit um, for now, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So at the bottom here, there's a preview button. So if we click on the preview button, that'll take us to another page, and you'll be able to see those layers that we talked about. And there's a slider here on the right. You can see we have 635 layers. If we click and drag that slider down, you'll start to see your model sliced in the number of layers that you have that slider set to. So if we zoom in and use the right click button 
we can rotate around and see what our infill settings are. And remember we talked about that infill density being 7%. So that determines the density of these patterns you see in here. So just to prove it, if I go back, if we come back to our settings, come to infill, I'm going to change this now to 15%. I'm going to re-slice using that slice button at the bottom. Okay, there we go. So we've, we've got our new preview, preview already because we're in the preview workspace. If you notice at the top here, you've got three different tabs, prepare, preview, and monitor. You can switch between them whenever you like. But now if we move the slider, you can see that the density of that pattern is a lot higher. And generally, the benefit to this in sort of practical applications is strength. The more infill you have, the stronger the print. If you want a super strong print, you'll print it at 100% infill, which will be solid. The downside is you just use more plastic. And for cosmetic prints like this one, you don't need it to be strong. All you need is that there's enough support for the print to actually complete for when it's printed on top of itself. So I'm going to go back, go to infill, set this back to 7%. We're going to slice again, and this is what we're going to use to print our model. Okay, so let's hide that menu at the top by clicking on it once again. That gets rid of it. If we move our slider to the top again, you can see the full print. That's how our print's going to look. It looks great. Now what we want to do is export this slicer file out to an SD card for our 3D printer. And to do this, we need to generate something called G-code. G-code has just been generated by slicing the model. All we have to do now is save this to a file. So if you click on save to a file, you can pick any location here on your computer. If you've plugged in an SD card in an SD card reader, you'll see that here somewhere. So you can click on that, save your G code to the device, and then we're ready to go and 3D print. Okay, so let's take this over to the Ender 5 S1. And as you can see, it's a very sturdy, well-built cantilever design. It has a big extruder head with plenty of cooling, which is what allows it to print so fast. We've got a 220 by 220 by 280 build volume and a brilliant 4.3 inch touchscreen display that's viewable from a wide angle. As far as displays go, it's very responsive and I've had no issues with it so far. So let's go ahead and switch on the machine and insert the SD card containing the G code that we just exported. The machine has four main modes. Under settings, you can preheat, you can do your auto bed leveling, or if you want to go old school, you can do the manual leveling. If we come to the prepare tab, you can see you've got your standard stuff there. You can move the axes, set your temperature controls, and the in-out settings for loading and unloading filament. Given that we're printing in PLA, we're going to preheat PLA, wait for the temperatures to rise, and if you come back to the home screen, you'll see the current temperatures and the target temperatures. When you're ready to print, hit the print button, and that file we exported should be right at the very top. If you click on the play button, that'll initiate the print.
that's it for this video thank you so much for watching as I said simple project that a lot of people should be able to get on board with great if you've just got a new 3d printer or if you're looking to just print something festive I hope you enjoyed it as you can see I'm back I'm creating content again I'm super excited for the new year all that's left is for me to wish you a Merry Christmas a Happy New Year and of course as always I'll see you in the next video Take care.